Welcome to the International Catholic University. I am Father Kenneth Baker. I am the editor of the Homiletic and Pastoral Review, which is a monthly magazine for the Catholic clergy. I just uh, started my 30th year as editor of that magazine. It uh, goes every month to about half the parishes in the United States. And in that magazine, we cover all areas of Catholic teaching, Catholic doctrine, uh, morality, architecture, singing, liturgy, the sacraments, you name it, and uh, we have articles on that. Also, I am a teacher. Now, for years I've been teaching, and um, I also teach courses on the Holy Trinity. So I've been asked by uh, the International Catholic University to present for you the Catholic teaching on the Holy Trinity. I think I'd like to begin by pointing out that the Holy Trinity is the most basic of all the mysteries of the Catholic faith. You have certain mysteries that surround Christ as the God-man. There are mysteries connected with the Holy, the Holy Spirit. But it's impossible to understand adequately who Jesus Christ is without understanding something about the Holy Trinity. That Jesus is the Word of God. He's the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Likewise, the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Blessed Trinity. He is the principle of sanctification. He's called the soul of the church. But we can only stand, understand who the Holy Trinity is in reference to the Father and the Son. So we have this very difficult concept to grasp that there's only one God. It's the one God of the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. But through the revelation of Jesus, we know that in that one God, there is a threeness. There's a community present, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's extremely difficult to adequately understand this. We can never totally understand it. It's an absolute mystery. But Jesus has revealed many things about the Trinity, and that is taught by the Church. Uh, it's contained in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, and in the tradition of the Church, the teaching of the Fathers, the... Um, councils of the church, for example, the liturgy of the church. When we make the sign of the cross, we say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So the, the three are mentioned there in one sign that there's three persons in one God. So the word Trinity, for example, which was invented in the second century by a theologian called Theophilus in, uh, in Antioch in Asia Minor, he made up the word Trinity, which means three in one. So there are three persons in one God. So this has to do with the majesty of God. And what we want to do is get some kind of insight into the inner life of God. God is a community of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our human community, and the human family even, reflects that community in some small way that we find in God a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's one thing to believe the faith, like to be able to recite the Apostles' Creed, as we do when we say the Rosary, for example. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, and so forth. And then uh, the, you can go beyond that to reflect on it and to understand it a little bit better. It was St. Augustine and others after him who came up with this idea that what theology is, it's faith seeking understanding. So first you have faith. You accept what Jesus tells about himself and about his Father and about the Holy Spirit because of the miracles that he worked and because of the prophecies that he made who were, that were fulfilled and because of his resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven. But we can also understand more about that. And that's what theology tries to do, is to take faith and to pursue it and to understand it more deeply. So the, what we're dealing with here in the Trinity is the most basic of all the truths of the Catholic faith is that the inner nature of God 
is triune. That is, that there are three persons in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So what I propose to do in this course is to present to you what the scriptures have to say about that, what the teaching of the church has to say about it, and what the tradition of the church is. This is not, I'm not uh, transmitting to you the ideas that Father Baker has about the Trinity. What I'm trying to do is to present to you what the teaching of the Catholic Church is with regard to the teaching with the Trinity. Now, in various ways, if you reflect on it, we all manifest our faith in the Trinity and various things we do every week as uh, Catholics. So, for example, when we make the sign of the cross, uh, when we go to church and take holy water and make the sign of the cross, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. That's a an act of faith in the Trinity. It's one motion in the sign of a cross, but it mentions three individual, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You might think also about baptism, that when uh, you were baptized, you were baptized but in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As our Lord directed the apostles to do in the end of St. Matthew's Gospel, 28th chapter, verse 19, to go into the whole world and teach them what I taught you and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we have one God but there's a threeness in God. And that's what we hope to investigate, is to explain what the church's teaching is, how the church can explain that God is both three and one, but that it's not a contradiction. We're not saying, for example, that there are three gods, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, although perhaps some Christians might think in those terms that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit refer to three individuals. They refer to three persons, but there's only one nature, there's only one substance in God, there's only one God. Each Mass that we attend is begun by invoking the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But what we have here is that each of the three persons possesses the same substance, the same nature. When we have a human person, we have a personality that possesses one nature. And every time you have a, you multiply human beings, you multiply the nature. That's not the case in God. That's not the case in God. In God, you have three persons, what we mean by persons of the ultimate subject of, of activity, but only one nature. So in God, there's only one thinking and there's only one willing, even though there are three that do it, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Another indication of the Trinity that might help you is you might think about the prayers of the liturgy. Most of the prayers of the liturgy at Mass are directed to the Father, through the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Although most of them conclude that way. You know, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. So there's another indication of the Church's faith in the Holy Trinity as manifested in the liturgy.